Hello and welcome to Darwin Northern Territory, the top end of Australia. Today I'm going to fly on a Qantas Link Embraer E190 jet, wet leased from Alliance Airlines to Adelaide. I've already made an economy class review on this aircraft. This time I'm going to check out the business class experience on board. You will see a lot of food in this video, so make sure you watch it when you are not hungry. Let's go! Despite being a relatively small city compared with other capital cities in Australia, there are actually lots of things you can do in Darwin. It is a gateway to massive Kakadu National Park. In the city, there's Crocodilus Park, Darwin Aviation Museum and Darwin Military Museum, etc. You can easily fill up two weeks' time here in the top end. Where I am now is Darwin Waterfront Precinct, located only a 5 minute walk from the CBD. It features many restaurants, bars, a wave pool and a man-made sand beach for locals and tourists. The best time to visit Darwin is during its dry season from April to October. During this period, there's Sunset Market on the foreshore of Mindo Beach on Thursdays and Sundays. The market is the heart of Darwin's cultural melting pot. You can see over 200 unique stores ranging from food stores to an array of arts, crafts and service stores. One thing that I would like to recommend you to try is a crocodile meat. This is probably the only city in Australia that you can find cheap croc meat in many pubs and markets. The Roadkill Cafe's specialties are gourmet burgers made from Australian and local meats including crocodile, kangaroo, buffalo, beef and pork. $13.50 for a croc burger or $17.50 with chips is a good price. I was honestly expecting more money. In my opinion, crocodile meat is something that money cannot buy outside the Northern Territory. I tried to look for restaurants which have crocodile burgers in cans. There used to be a few, but none of them do it anymore. Here's my burger. You see, there isn't any seating space between the stores. Where do people enjoy their food? Aha, this way. There are a big grass area behind the stores where you can sit down in the shade. But that's not where I want to sit. Just a few steps away from the market is the Mindo Beach. Browsing through hundreds of food options along the market, then enjoy them on the beach with sunset in the background. This place feels like a paradise, isn't it? It's such a good idea to set up a market on the foreshore of the beach. No wonder it is this busy every time I come here. Let's try the burger. Between the buns are coleslaw, marinated crocodile meat topped with mayo. It is simple, but usually simple ingredients require high quality of meat because the flavor highly relies on the taste of the meat itself. You might not believe me if you've never had crocodile before, but it does taste very much like chicken. Even the color of the meat is the same. This is a very good burger. If you would like to try, come here on Thursdays and Sundays between the last Thursday of April and the last Thursday of October. The beach does get crowded in the final moments of the sunset, but it still shouldn't be hard to find a spot to sit down. If for whatever reason you couldn't make to the sunset market, yet you still would like to try the crocodile meat, you can go to Hotel Darwin in the city. Their territory tasting plate allows you to try emu fillet, crocodile tail and kangaroo in one plate. This is my favorite pub in Darwin. I also highly recommend their steak and grilled barramundi. I'm so sorry for being off topic. I hope you still enjoyed my crocodile adventure. Let's head to the airport. Darwin Airport is the 10th busiest airport in the country. It's a hub for Air North and Focus City for Qantas Airways. Qantas installed four self-checking kiosks in the terminal, but you'll still have to drop off your bag at one of the staffed checking counters, so I didn't bother using it. Thank you very much. 
I arrived at the airport four hours before departure. The staff at the counter was very nice and let me check in early. Masks are mandatory inside the terminal. There are mask vending machines which sell one disposal mask for $2.50, five for $11.50, or a cloth mask for $12. After going through security screening, the departures lounge is located on the first floor. The area is split in half. If you turn right, you will see the entry to the international departures lounge. And to the left of the escalators are boarding gates for domestic flights. There's a souvenir shop, a cafe, a hungry jacks, a travel shop, and a bar. These facilities should fulfill most people's needs. Next to gate 4, you can have a clear view of the apron and the runway. At the end of the terminal opposite to gate 4 is the Qantas Club Lounge. From outside, it looks like a small regional lounge, so I didn't expect much from it. But it's actually so much bigger and a lot better than I thought. Hello. Yeah, all good. I've done this all the time. Do you remember once I was told at Virgin Australia Sydney Lounge that filming poses a security risk? Quite oppositely, the staff here not only had no problem with me filming as long as I don't film the face of the staff, but also shows great interest in my YouTube channel even though she doesn't know who I am yeah, yet. I, I know. Okay. Yeah. Feel free. Yeah. 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 yeah, I would not film any. If no. I, even if I have the staff, I blur them out. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Oh, all good. Yeah, yep. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Since I've now received a big green light for filming, let me show you this hidden gem at Darwin Airport. First of all, the lounge can accommodate up to 650 travelers at the same time, therefore it is huge. Immediately after the entry is a meeting room equipped with a printer, followed by different styles of lounge chairs in different arrangements. At the end, there's a kids room. You think this is all the seating space they've got? There are so many more. And yep, there are still more if you keep going. The lounge actually offers 270 degree view of the airport. One side of the lounge faces the road outside the terminal, one side faces the control tower, and one side gives you a great view of the apron and runway 29. I believe Northern Territory has one of the least COVID restrictions in Australia. The bar and buffet have returned to self-service. The bar offers barista coffee, tea, snacks, different beer, both draft and bottled, soft drinks and wine. The alcoholic beverages are only served after 12pm. On the buffet table, there's juice, a salad, soup, some hot meal options, a dessert station, and even a pancake machine. Here's the menu. I'm a big fan of soup, therefore the first thing I picked was the black bean and vegetable broth. The dark chocolate cake looks yummy, so I decided to try one as well. I suspect this broth is an entree dish. It is very appetizing and makes me want to have more food. The lounge really offers a good view. You can see all the takeoffs and landings when the airport uses runway 29.
Let's have a look at the chocolate cake. I like how they only give you a small piece instead of forcing you to finish a big slice of the cake. It tastes amazing. I don't like cakes that are too sweet. The dark chocolate ensured the cake to have a strong chocolate flavor, but prevented it from being overly sweet. I love it. One common problem at many Qantas Club lounges is that there are no power plugs near the windows. I often have to choose between the view and charging my device. I also discovered a tea station and a magazine shelf displaying the monthly published Qantas magazine. I took one for me to read during the flight. I'm actually quite full right now, but in order to show you other food options, I'm going to have some more. This vegetarian center face salad combines crisp colorful veggies such as corns, peas and black beans with some serious flavor from jalapeno peppers and lime. I only took one scoop at the buffet because I wasn't sure if I would like it, but it turned out to be my favorite dish at this lounge. The Bene fish curry and roast potatoes. They didn't specify which fish they used on the menu, but I guess it is barramundi. The curry has successfully hidden or covered the general fishy taste of the bara. Another great dish. The lounge tops up food very frequently. After the fish tray was emptied, it was replaced by a new hot dish. It's not shown on the menu, but I would call it creamy chicken with potatoes. It tastes okay, but I prefer the fish. For those who don't like fish, this would be a good alternative. Overall, all the dishes I had at the lounge are delicious. My favorite has to be the Santa Fe salad and the dark chocolate cake. I believe almost every Qantas Club lounge offers shower facility. In Darwin, there are a total of five shower rooms, including one accessible shower. The water pressure appears to be excellent. You can ask for a towel and toiletries from the reception. Good afternoon, members and guests. This information is for our customers traveling on Qantas Flight 841 to Sydney. In summary, I've had a good time at this Qantas Club lounge. Thank you. I love the airside views and the food they offered were excellent. Compared to Virgin Australia lounges, Qantas Club is usually much bigger and the food is much better. Plus, Qantas has a lot more domestic lounges than Virgin. Virgin used to have a lounge here in Darwin, but now it has become the operation center for the Northern Territory Border Control Unit. The aircraft they'll be flying me to Adelaide is a Qantas Link Embraer E190 jet wet lease from Alliance Airlines. The aircraft seats a total of 94 passengers. It is perfect for Qantas to operate on medium-haul regional routes that are too big for the Boeing 737. This all-white E190 also belongs to Alliance Airlines. It's currently being dry leased to Air North. It has the same interior as all the other Alliance Airlines E190s at the moment. Being painted all-white, it looks more like a private jet. Boarding for my flight commenced 20 minutes before departure. I had a malfunction with my GoPro at that time, so I didn't get to film the boarding announcement. Flying in business class gives you the privilege of boarding through the dedicated boarding line. VHUYY. This is in fact the exact same plane that flew me from Adelaide to Alice Springs in June. Alliance purchased its E-190s from two operators, American Airlines and Copa Airlines. Alliance has kept Copa Airlines interior, including the seats on this aircraft. The 10 business class seats are in a 1-2 configuration. 
There are four rows on the single side and three rows on the twin side. The seat had a width of 20 inches and a pitch of 38 inches. The seat is 2 inches wider than economy. Welcome aboard everyone, my name is Heidi, a cab manager. Joining me in the cabin is Kate. Business class seats are fully covered in leather. The structure looks similar to the business class seats in Virgin Australia's Boeing 737s. Unfortunately, there's no power plug on this aircraft. There's an extendable cocktail table shared between two seats, and each seat is reclinable. Radio transmitters and devices without flight mode can't be used at any time. On this flight, it's mandatory for all customers and cabin crew to wear a face mask. There's an adjustable headrest at the front of each seat. The seat pocket is massive, it can fit a lot of things. Above each seat, there's an individually controlled reading light and air vent. They are the same as in economy. This is my first time flying in Qantas business. Rex has been offering pre-flight drinks since it introduced business class in March. Virgin reintroduced pre-flight drinks when it relaunched its business class in April. Qantas being the best airline in Australia, and given that its business class are so much more expensive than its competitors, I was expecting the same. But both surprisingly and disappointingly, the pre-flight drink was not offered because of COVID. Taking off from runway 29 is very scenic. If you are heading south, sitting in a window seat on the left gives you an amazing view of the airport and Darwin City. I picked a seat on the right because I would like to see the sunset later on. I know Qantas provides a flywheel pack which includes a face mask and two sanitizing wipes. But did you know the wipes come in different sizes? I definitely prefer the longer one. In the seat pocket there is an Alliance Airlines safety card. It will be replaced with Qantas Link branded E190 safety card eventually. The windows on Embraer E-Jet series are square shaped. They may look interesting if you are used to flying on Boeing or Airbus aircraft. There are two cabin crews serving 94 passengers. The cabin manager serves business class first, then she occasionally has to help the other crew in economy. The meal was served shortly after takeoff. In business, there are three meal choices, with two being vegetarian. I picked the only meat option, pork banger with mash. All choices come with a dessert and two Lindor chocolates. As a side dish, a slice of white sourdough or sourdough harvest grain loaf with sesame is also offered. For drink, the available options are red or white wine, sparkling or still water, beer, tea, coffee, juice and soft drinks. These are pretty much the same options as in economy, except I guess the wines offered in business are more premium. I asked for a glass of red wine to match with the pork. Bangers and mash is a traditional dish of Great Britain and Ireland. The dish served by Qantas consists of two pork sausages, peas, mash as well as onion gravy. The mash and the onion gravy is a good combination and was flavorful. The sausages were also quite nice. However, bangers and mash is an example of pub grub in the UK, meaning it is relatively quick and easy to make in large quantities. 
Feel free to disagree with me, but the main plate, excluding the bread, the chocolate, and the dessert, looks more like an economy class meal on a long haul international flight. A Qantas business class ticket on this flight is around nineteen hundred dollars. That's five times higher than economy and about the same price as a gold single cabin on the Gan from Adelaide to Darwin. I would like to see fresh meat such as chicken breast, Atlantic salmon, or eye fillet steak, rather than processed meat such as sausages to be served in business class. I don't think this would cost much extra for Qantas, but it would bring up the dining experience to a higher level. Again, this is what I was thinking while having this meal. Feel free to disagree with me. The sourdough served on board has a crisp and crackly crust combined with a tender springy crumb. It was nice. The dessert tonight is a 60 gram apple and cinnamon tea cake. There are cuts of apple and raisins in the cake. It was yummy. I always find the dessert from Simmons Kitchen to be satisfactory. Qantas has picked a good supplier here. The portion of the whole meal was great. It was tasty. I was just a bit disappointed with the menu. For comparison's sake, after finishing my business class meal, I asked for a serving of the meal in economy class. This is the first time I've seen Qantas serving the meal box in economy since March last year. I can therefore confirm that Qantas has now returned to its pre-COVID catering in economy. The meal today is lamb kofta with spiced rice. Kofta is a family meatball dish found in the Indian subcontinent, Middle Eastern, or Central Asian cuisines. Covered in the sauce is a big piece of lamb kofta served on a bedding of jasmine rice. The meat was cooked through and tasted tender. The dish has a mild sweetish flavor, therefore it should be accepted by most people. After my meal, I asked for a cup of green tea. I especially asked Honey for my tea, and the crew was very helpful and got what I wanted. Half an hour later, a vanilla ice cream was served. Compared to the Qantas 737, the divider between business and economy is a bit low. People in economy can clearly see what I'm doing. Furthermore, the curtain was not used throughout the flight. Hence, business on E190 has less privacy than on the 737. I'm not too bothered by this. I just would like to point it out. There's no free Wi-Fi nor wireless streaming offered on board at this time, but the seat is quite comfortable. Most people should be able to take a good nap. Let's have a look at the Qantas magazine that I took from the lounge earlier. Qantas suspended its in-flight magazine in April last year. It hasn't returned to the seat pockets on the aircraft yet. However, it's now available at every Qantas lounges. This monthly published magazine is more like a travel guide, showcasing the attractions of different destinations that Qantas flies to. For example, July being the school holiday month, Qantas mainly introduced tourist destinations such as Katoomba in the Blue Mountains, Port Douglas Great Barrier Reef, just an hour drive north of Cairns, and various ski locations across Victoria, New South Wales, and New Zealand. The magazine also features international destinations such as Tokyo and Cook Islands. It is an informative magazine and gives you ideas for your next holiday. Let's explore the rest of the aircraft. I've always been curious about the legroom of the first row. I'm now sitting in seat 2F. The space between my knee and the bulkhead at front is much greater than the space between seat 3F and 4F. However, because I can't put my feet under the bulkhead, I cannot fully stretch my legs. But if you are shorter than me, you will probably be able to. The legroom in seat 1A seems to be the same as the legroom in seat 2F. There are two level trees on this aircraft. The one at the front is dedicated to the crew and business class passengers. The roof is low in this level tree, and the space is a bit small.
few hours into the flight, it's great to see that the crew handed out clean masks to replace the old one. I'm now sitting in row 25, the last row in economy. The economy class seats are in a 2-2 configuration with a width of 18 inches and a pitch of 31 inches. The seats are covered in fabric and there's no headrest in front of each seat. If you'd like to have a more detailed look of the seat, please feel free to check out my other E190 review in economy class. The other lavatory on board is located at the back of the aircraft, shared by a total of 80 economy class passengers. Although I still can't fully stand up straight, the roof is a bit higher in this lavatory and there's more space to move around. This lavatory also features a baby change table. There are a total of 3 passengers in business class and the economy class doesn't seem to be full either. Pretty much everyone has 2 seats to themselves. Not long before landing, the crew offered me 2 packs of snacks. I have to say that the cabin manager on this flight, Heidi, is a very experienced crew and she was really accommodating with my filming. Thank you very much. Before landing, I moved to seat 3A, the left side of the aircraft, so I can enjoy the stunning city approach into Adelaide Airport. The business class seat on the single side also has an extendable cocktail table, but much smaller in size. So how was my first ever business class experience with Qantas? First of all, the major differences between economy and business on this aircraft are the seats. The business class seats are wider, offer more legroom and hence more comfortable. If you are a Qantas bronze or silver frequent flyer, flying in business also allows you to experience the Qantas lounge, priority checking, priority boarding and enjoy a better meal on board. To be honest, Qantas is already offering the best business class meal in Australia. However, did the meal wow me? Not really. An economy class ticket from Darwin to Adelaide is usually around $400, a business class ticket is around $1900. When travelling in economy, you can bid for an upgrade before your flight. I bid $360 to be upgraded to business class the day before and my bid was successful. I know not many people would pay almost $2000 to travel in business, but is it worth bidding $360 to get an upgrade? I'll let you be the judge. Welcome to Adelaide. Qantas Lake Airlines are acknowledging the traditional custodians of this land. On behalf of all of us here at Qantas Lake and One World, thank you for choosing to fly with us. It's been our pleasure to have you aboard today. We look forward to seeing you again the next time you travel. If you're visiting Adelaide, we hope you enjoy your stay. And of course, to those returning, welcome home. Thank Thank you so much for watching. This review was filmed on the 16th of June, the weekend before South Australia entered lockdown. I flew to Tasmania the day after I filmed this flight, so I'm safe at the moment. If you are in South Australia, Victoria or New South Wales right now, please stay safe, stay at home and follow the COVID rules. I'll see you all in my next video.